Okay, good morning traders. Uh, welcome to the start of the Asian market session and welcome to Trade the Structure. We're going to take a look at the overnight markets and the levels we expect to see some action. So we'll just uh, recap what we uh, what we see and then just the levels that we're concerned with at the moment. So ASX 200, we're looking at that now, we'll look at the SPY 200. So this is the short term, we're only on the five minute chart here, but this is kind of the action I'm looking for. Um, you can see that that was the move down during the day, yesterday's um, day session, and then we completely blew it apart okay so any fear that was driving that market down was completely reversed and we actually traded through these highs at 73.26 we finished just below that uh, but you got a little higher low 72.97 which could drag in some buyers um, it's a bit of a choppy market at the moment you know there's two different markets you got the day session which does one thing and the night session which does another i'm always concerned that they're ramping up overnight so they can sell back into it during the day and it's been a few days where it's actually done that Okay, you should have expected overnight a bit of um, a reaction lower, but our market's actually, I think this has got out of hand on the upside. So you see the US actually opened down and finished down slightly. We basically finished up from where we started. So this, the start of the day session was around here. Okay, so we're basically right back there again. So around the close of, um, of Friday or last Friday. So we'll take a look at the bigger action. This is on the, um, this is a bigger time frame. We're on the 30 minute chart. Now we spoke about this yesterday as well. We're looking at the four, four hourly chart. What you saw there there's some, a big level up here around that 73.50 so it's just whether or not you know this inside level holds so it's kind of important so back to this one this inside level holds if it can hold and you can sort of chop around here we can extend up through 73.26 if 73.26 holds and this is the shoulder for this double top then we're going through 72.97 okay so it's going to be more about what happens on the open um you i wouldn't mind if we do see if we see a flash higher 73.64 flush the highs and reverse, then I'll be looking for that sells. Okay, but it's really about the openness, which way they're going to drive it today. Um, but the US being down, it did actually ramp up into the close. So we'll talk about that in just a moment. Now, Asian markets, that's the Hang Seng, drive down the open and pretty much did nothing. We held below that 21.515 area. Now that to me, that's kind of a grind higher, at least we believe we're going to get a sell off again, okay? which could take us through 21075 or 2900. So that could easily do the same thing we did in the open and drive down, okay? But we'll have to wait and see. It's all about, like I said, what happens on the open, what happens with the initial drive, which way they're trying to trigger the market. Um, so that a no, initial opening is quite important uh, at, the, at the moment anyway. And then you've got if there's some more news that comes out, which it did prior to this um, open here. That's at 12.15 Sydney time. Probably open had some sort of negative news, which drove the market down, which drove our market down, which drove um, Japan was actually closed, but drove the Asian markets down. That could, if something like that happens out of the blue, then yeah, expect something to get sold off again. Inflation is concerning. It's still growing. Inflation concerns are growing because you've got oil prices just rallying, you know, day after day, and there's no real end in sight to that rally at the moment. It keeps getting buoyed, which we'll speak about in just a moment. Japan, like I said, is closed, so they've got two levels I'm concerned with at the moment, 27.375 and then 27.155. It's going to be about the open where they're going to play catch up, but then pretty much nothing happened. It went sideways. It was pretty much range bound, but it had no underlying market during the day to go off, okay, off the index. That's where the, you know, the index is playing catch up that I want to go down, up, but I don't think anything really happened overnight to push it either way with regards to the Friday's close. Okay, Dow. Now that's the open, drove it up on the open. So that was right at 12.30 and then basically sold off. So you can see, you know, if you don't believe in algo movement, um, you should really start to think about it. You know, algos will drive the market to a certain level and then sell it off. So they, what they've done here is trap uh, some traders on the open. It was driving it higher, that little spike right at 12.30, spike into the open, uh, spike into this high at around, was it 34.780? It spiked in there and then it got sold off since. Okay, so we held a lower high in here. It was getting sold down on the back of that news, a bit of negativity around, and you've got rising inflation, you know, that really the Fed keeps talking up, we're gonna do something about it, but we're just not gonna do it just yet. Okay, we'll just let it go for a while. Okay, so that's their attitude. Elgos, like I said, Elgos are driving the market higher uh, into the close. So it was pretty much, you know, 15 minutes into the close, before the close, the market's got drove, uh, drove higher, or got driven higher. Okay, better English there driven higher. So that was pretty much out of the blue. You can see the market was chopping around here. It was looking like it was heading south and then boom, up we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that was, go and look at the indices, the underlying indices. It was 10 minutes before the open, I'm sorry, 10 minutes before the close, three of them, bang, up they go. Okay, go drove back up again. So looks like there's potentially some buying. That is still an uptrend. You've got sort of a key level down here, 34, 34 150. This could be the higher low. If we start to chop around here and we get some sort of action, you know, like this, I'm expecting it to go higher, okay? 
higher during the US session, right? Um, tech, that was just a mess. <laughs> no, no real way to describe that one. That's a, the open at 12.30. So this first green candle, it wasn't too bad after that. It was holding above this level at uh, 14.320. And you can see what they were trying to do. It's basically what they are doing. Okay, not trying. They are trying to hold it up. So negativity ramped it up. Negativity ramped it up. Okay, so they're trying to hold it above that level and engineer either a further push higher or some sort of, you know, buy it up there, buy a start to, okay, we're getting supported, we're getting supported, and they sell into it. Okay, they've been instos and, you know, algorithmic traders, all things like that. So that market was just chopped around. Okay, so pretty much not much has changed. 14,320. By the looks of the way that was acting, it's, it seems to me that it wants to hold above 14,320. Okay, but we'll just wait and see. Germany. Now, Germany, you had that um, move down, pressed up into this level, and that was into the US Open. The Asia, so the European Open was around about here, uh, somewhere around yeah, somewhere around here. It popped up, held at 14,427 area, uh, and then was sold off back down to 14,240. So to me, that's looking more heavy than anything else. You've got this uptrend. Then you've got either consolidation for another move up. Uh, but if that's the case, I would expect the bigger flush lower to drag in some sellers before it can be ramped up again and they get squeezed out. But it's going sideways at the moment. It's kind of range bound. It's not really a trending market anymore for me. It's more of a range bound market, okay, a consolidation market. So it's whether it's consolidating and we're going to get these buyers from the trend up squeezed out on a move down, or are we going to get some consolidation, a further consolidation and get ramped up again and sort of go through this 14.510? Then you'd be looking up to 14.920. Okay, UK. It really didn't do too much either. It was just capped at around that 74, 65 area. It wasn't a bad move. You had, um, this is the open around these lows. We were speaking about that uh, thing yesterday. It was pretty different. You had sold off, held in here, and it was ramped straight back up again. So we ramped up, took out this high, but really couldn't go on with it. Okay, then it was pretty much choppy action after that. So it's whether or not this level starts to hold, we start to push down, we push down through these lows. But at the moment, it's still an uptrend because higher low, higher lows holding. All right. So just bear in mind, you just want to be keeping an eye on, okay, if it starts to hold above that level, that level is around 74.10, starts to hold above that level, then look for an extension through these highs and potentially a deeper, a deeper move above that resistance zone. Currencies. Uh, let me just check what the... Let's get rid of that. This is the, sorry, just get myself organized. Dollar index. So dollar index didn't do too much. That was the European session. Look, it got supported, a bit of support, maybe on the back of the, um, uh, on the back of the, the, the fear from the Asian market session, which is a bit of safe haven buying into the US dollar. But I think it's more concerned with um, interest rates at the moment. And I would expect this starts to get uh, buoyed. So if it's a safe haven bid, yeah dollar should get buoyed. If it's inflationary and as inflation, I mean, with crude still going up, with crude holding highs, the longer that holds that 110 mark or around, there's the longer that inflation confirms is going to linger, the longer you would, the higher you expect that US dollar to go because the, the government or the Fed Reserve are going to have to battle higher inflation. Now, the RBA is already talking up uh, high inflation and concern about the property market. I mean, everyone has, except the government, they don't seem to be worried too much about it and they're happy to uh, support that market. So. They are, Federal Reserves are concerned about inflation. Uh, so you would expect that US dollar to start pressing back up into these highs. I would at very least, I would expect these levels to hold around 97 and a half. Okay. And then you've got this sort of um, resistance zone, which is holding at the moment. So you can see it's kind of range bound at the moment, but range bound in a broader range, but up at the highs. Let's get rid of that. So Aussie dollar, it's showing you know, pretty much the same. It didn't do too much yesterday. If we go back to the open, uh, open was around about, yeah, say in here, it sort of popped up, flushed out some of these um, uh, shorts and then squeezed lower. Okay, so it's more range bound between 74.28 and 73.72. So at the moment, I'll be looking to, to work that range. It actually doesn't look too bad if that's the case. You can look at that. It could look for a breakdown. So if you happen to sort of flush higher and then fail down, I'll be looking for a shoulder and a push back down to 73.72. Okay. If not, they could just keep grinding up to this resistance zone at 74.28 euro with um, expectations. If I do expect the US dollar to go up, um, I do expect the euro to go down. I was looking at that as a bit of a break higher yesterday, which it did do that, but it didn't really go anywhere. Okay, that moved down. It did break higher, which is great, but it really didn't give a setup. This is not a higher low in here. So you'd be looking to trade that 
with the break, you know, if you get this sort of break here, you want to see a pullback. That, whoops, that's not what I wanted. That sort of consolidation and then a rally. Okay, but you didn't get that. You pretty much got the market sort of broke higher, pulled back, but took out the low and then chopped around. So for me, it's still, this could be the kind of the move we're going to watch out for, which means pressure down. Okay, pound. Pound still holding these higher lows, higher lows just in here. Uh, you can see potential for another higher low in here. Could ramp back up. It's getting ramped up, but then failing just through these highs. So you still got this zone through here, 3190, and then up to 3210, which it's still holding at the moment. So it's not getting too far through these um, these highs. Okay, you can see it's getting rejected. So the time it pushed up through this zone, rejected straight back down again, got rejected off the level. Okay, we pushed up into it, held a high level, pushed up a bit higher, but rejected again. So it's a bit of a battle at the moment. Um, Higher US dollar means a lower pound, but the thing is US, the pound is actually looking at raising rates as well. So it's getting support from raising rates locally for the pound. So you're buying the pound, buying the US dollar, which is kind of offsetting it, uh, each movement at the moment. I would expect any safe haven dollar into the US dollar, safe haven buying into the US dollar, would see this pound you know, really trade down and really start to take out some of these um, higher lows. But that's not happening at the moment. Trend is up. You've still got this big basin pattern we spoke about a while, higher lows holding. So you're looking for pretty much i would be aiming at this uh, pressing high today. Yen, now the yen, this is what we we're talking about yesterday, holding this level at 119.09 uh, with a bullishness into the US dollar, no real safe haven to worry about into the yen, any safe haven buying to the yen. It was a bit of chop around here. You could see there was a bit of safe haven buying, but it was happy to hold 119.09. So for me, that's trending higher, nothing's changed, still movement higher. You know, that's the, the most recent anchor to the uptrend, 119.09. And just see if they can continue. So I wouldn't mind seeing more of a, a maybe a flush lower and see if they can hold above the level. Okay, you want to hold above that 109. You don't want to retest into that level because it's showing that it's just lacking of buys. Maybe the buyers are starting to step aside. So that's the kind of action I'll be looking for on that one. Gold. Now gold's held this high level at 1920 off these lows. Okay, you got this um, high low that real spike down. It didn't get to 1886. It tried, and then it's broken higher. Okay, so this is the downtrend. We start to break that now. Are we consolidating sideways or are we going to start to hold this high low, 1920, which suggests we're going to move up through 1950 and potentially up to this level around 2003. Okay, but for now, I don't like this kind of rejection at the moment. There could be a little minor level, which is happy to cap it at the moment, but generally they're going to do that through the Asian market session, potentially through European trade until they release yeah, release the, um, the floodwaters and, and start to generate a move or start to engineering a move into the start of the US session. We've got um, oil. Oil here, you can see just got ramped up. So found support. You can see this support through here. It broke down through. We broke back above, retested it, held at 101.75, and then we ramped up to the next level. Okay, so remember, things go offer to bid, bid to offer, meaning bid zone here once it gets retested it holds it goes to the it tries to find the next logical offer zone okay which is that 111.15 and the reverse on the set on the downside you see here down broke down through here held there looks for the next bid zone which yeah you found something you know just in here whoops if you see that so that's kind of the process for the markets you know the instos are driving it algos are driving it but they're driving it from zone to zone all right, so there you've got this little offer zone up here, 111.15. We'll see if it's going to do, you know, same thing it did here. Are we going to break above, hold, retest, and go up to 124, potentially work its way up to here? Or are we going to potentially flush straight back down and then get a lower high? Okay, that's what I'd be looking for ideally. And that's what I'm hoping for anyway, just to ease off those uh, oil uh, pressure into petrol prices. Copper. Copper here, you know, it's worked up through that level 148. We pushed up into 103.65, where it's starting to fail at the moment. That's what I'm seeing here, starting to fail here. That momentum's up. You sort of got this rally. You see the longer term, and it's trending up. Whether we're going to roll over from here, which it looks like we are. The way we've gotten through this kind of a zone there, so that was kind of the anchor to the uptrend around here. You can see into that into that high, held, held, pushed. Okay, 103.65, then broke straight back down through it. So to me, this is, I'm expecting a lower high to play out. So I'm expecting potentially some chop at the moment and then a push down. Now, um, if there's some bad news to come out, you expect that to get pushed down because the US dollar probably rallies. Safe havens will rally and copper will probably get pushed down as the US dollar rallies. 
Um, but for now, it's still looking to me we're going to get this kind of a lower high. We might get a bit of chop into the European session, into the US session, but I'm sort of looking for that because of that break. I'm looking for that lower high. Now, if that doesn't, if this holds and we sort of pop down and retest it and start to do something like this, hold these minor higher lows like this, then expect a break of that 103.65 area. Okay, that's what I'll be looking for there. Bitcoin finished off with some cryptos. They didn't do too much. It actually, so I was expecting this level to hold yesterday just by the overnight, sorry, the weekend action into the cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin was actually getting buoyed, but it got sold down just into the open. And you've got the, the news that came out, which drove it down, uh, flushed out a few longs, a few longs for that ramp on Friday, uh, but held. Okay, so you've got, it's failing at 41,250, but it's holding higher levels. Okay, you can see <clears throat> support here at 40, 40,220, higher low, higher lows in here. So really it's about this level. If it breaks down through there, expect to push down to 42,20. If it holds that level and sort of can hold a higher level, expect to break up through 41,250. Okay, but yesterday it spent all, the, all its time holding below that level. It's starting to get pushed up into that level now. So it's pretty much, you know, I wouldn't be selling it yet. I'm watching for a lower high, but I wouldn't be buying it yet either. It's kind of in that no man's land for me. Ethereum. Found uh, resistance at 29.64. You can see it's sort of gapped down, spent all day yesterday, pushed down on bad news, but really any of that bad news, any of those flush into the indices was getting soaked up. Okay, it soaked up at 28.43. Buyers soaked it up. It grinded its way back up into the highs from Friday, uh, the close from Friday. Uh, but failed just off that level. So whether we're going to hold this higher level and ramp up or are we going to go flush back down to 28.43? So that's a minor double top on these charts. Okay. So that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Um, like I said, if you do enjoy it, it'd be fantastic if you could leave us a like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, help us grow that area, and help us spread the word a bit. Okay, so thank you very much, and we'll speak to you again tomorrow.